Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silvershots, Gagney, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we were talking about the Memory Management Unit, which is a hardware device responsible for the translation of logical addresses to physical addresses, and also protecting the operating system's memory space from user inter interruption and also protecting the user memory space from uh, interference from other users. Basically what we have discussed at this point assumes that the entire process is loaded into memory. Requiring that the entire process be loaded into memory at the same time can present problems depending upon the memory configuration of the computer and so on. In this lesson we're going to start talking about dynamic loading, which will allow us to only load those parts of the process that are necessary at the moment. So let's get started. Dynamic loading. As I just mentioned in our conversation so far, it's been necessary for the entire program and all the data of a process to be in physical memory for the process to execute. Now we will talk about a step forward in the evolution of memory management, dynamic loading. That is being able to load a routine only when it's needed. This brings up old memories for me. My first microcomputer was an Apple II Plus with 48K of RAM. By today's standards, that would have been the, on the level of crayons and a coloring book. I thought it was terrific. The operating system, Apple DOS, was primitive to say the least. One could run one program at a time. That was it. And the entire program had to fit in memory. And when the program wouldn't fit, you were done. It wasn't going to run. I hated that not enough memory message. Regarding the system we've been talking about so far, the size of the process has been limited to the size of physical memory. If the program was bigger than would fit in physical memory, the program would not run, just like on that old Apple. To obtain better memory space utilization, we can use dynamic loading. With dynamic loading, a routine is not loaded until it is called. All routines are kept on a disk in a relocatable load format. The main program is loaded into memory and is executed. When a routine needs to call another routine, the calling routine first checks to see if the other routine has been loaded. If it has not, the relocatable linking loader is called. That's relocatable linking loader. And its function is to load the desired routine into memory and to update the program's address tables to reflect this change. We haven't talked about the operating system maintaining a lot of tables, but there are tables that it does maintain, and this is one of the reasons to manage what's in memory and what's not. After being loaded, control is passed to the newly loaded routine. The advantage of dynamic loading is that a routine is only loaded when it's needed. This method is particularly useful when large amounts of code are needed to handle infrequently occurring cases, such as error routines. In such a situation, although the total program size may be large, the portion that is used, and therefore loaded, may be much smaller. Dynamic loading does not require special support from the operating system. It is the responsibility of the users to design their programs to take advantage of such a method. If you've been taking your programming classes to this point, you have heard about modular programming, and herein lies one of the reasons. Operating systems may help the programmer, however, by providing library routines to implement dynamic loading. Dynamically linked libraries. You'll see it abbreviated as DLL. Dynamically linked libraries are system libraries that are linked to user programs when the programs are run. 
Some operating systems support only static linking, as you see here, in which the system libraries are treated like any other object module and are combined by the loader into the binary program image. Dynamic linking, in contrast, is like dynamic loading. Here, though, linking rather than loading is postponed until execution time. This feature is usually used with system libraries, such as the standard C language library. Without this facility, each program on the system must include a copy of its language library in the executable image. Or at least it must include those routines referenced by the program. This requirement not only increases the size of an executable image, but also may waste main memory. The second advantage to dynamically linked libraries is that these libraries can be shared among multiple processes, so that only one instance of the dynamically linked library is in main memory. For this reason, DLLs are also known as shared libraries and are used extensively in Windows and Linux systems. When a program references a routine that is in a dynamic library, the loader locates the dynamically linked libraries, loading it into memory if necessary. It then adjusts the addresses that reference functions in the dynamically linked library to the location in memory where the DLL is stored. Dynamically linked libraries can be extended to library updates such as bug fixes. In addition, a library may be replaced by a new version, and all programs that reference the library will automatically use the new version. Without dynamic linking, all such programs would need to be relinked to gain access to the new library so that the programs will not accidentally execute new incompatible versions of libraries version information is included in both the program and the library more than one version of a library may be loaded into memory and each program uses its version information to decide which copy of the library to use versions with minor changes retain the same version number whereas versions with major changes increment the number Perhaps you have seen an application uh, call for a different version of the Java library than you currently have loaded. Perhaps you've updated your system with the latest version of the Java library, but the application you're running is not using that version and will ask you to load the older version. So if new versions are loaded into memory, only programs that are compiled with the new library version will be affected by any incompatible changes incorporated in it. Other programs linked before the new library was installed will continue to use the older library, just like I described to you with that Java. Unlike dynamic loading, Dynamic linking and shared libraries generally require help from the operating system. If the processes in memory are protected from one another, then the operating system is the only entity that can check to see whether the needed routine is in another process's memory space, or that can allow multiple processes to access the same memory addresses. Don't forget, Protecting the program's memory from other programs is part of the operating system's responsibility. So obviously one program accessing a library in another program's memory space is going to be an issue. This is a good place to stop, so let's go ahead and take a break, take a look at your notes, update your study guide. And when you come back, we're going to start talking about some various configurations of memory. The first one being contiguous memory allocation. That is to say that a program is loaded into memory addresses that are contiguous to one another. So let's take a break. <laughs> 